Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another ZBrush tutorial. And today we're going to be covering one of ZBrush's most powerful tools, ZSpheres. Just a quick note that we are using ZBrush Core, which is a cheaper version, but still very powerful version of ZBrush. If you are new to this channel, I post 3D tutorials on a weekly basis. Software includes Maya, ZBrush, and Substance Painter. If that is your sort of thing, please consider subscribing. So bring out your creativity, open up that software, and let's get started on ZBrush ZSpheres and how to create a creature. ZSpheres found in the Lightbox. So if you guys go to Lightbox, you can see over here to the right that we have a ZSphere. So go ahead and double click on that. And we basically get a sphere. So you'll notice that when I'm hovering over it, these little spheres show up. And when I click and drag, a sphere pops up. And if I click again, I can get another one. But if I hover and get to the middle, you'll notice that it turned green. That means that there's only gonna be one sphere that pops up. So otherwise symmetry is on, but when you turn green, it you only get one sphere. So the way to move things is by using the move, scale, and rotate. So right now we're drawing. If we wanna get rid of a sphere, you hold down Alt, and you'll notice that as I hover over one of the spheres, it turns negative. That's gonna get rid of the sphere. It's like a balloon animal. <laughs> That's a great way of saying that. You'll notice that when I click on a sphere, I can make more spheres and more spheres and more spheres, right? So that's what happens when you're in draw. If you wanna move a sphere, you need to go into move. Now for the Maya users, just click on W. So Q is draw and you can hover, you can see that W is move, E is scale and R is rotate, but let's go to move. You're gonna click on a sphere and then you can just click and drag it. This is based on your camera angle. So if you want to push this backwards, you have to make sure that it's based on your camera. If you want to push this forward, you have to make sure it's based on your camera. So keep in mind that you do have to toggle your camera around. So let me create a weird looking creature here. Uh, to scale something, you're going to click on E or the scale. And the important part is to click on the sphere and you can move it up or down on, just click and drag and you can get a bigger sphere. So if I want this to be smaller, click on that and then move up and down and you can get a bigger or a smaller sphere. If you wanna add more to the sphere, go back to the draw. Depends what you want. I'm gonna to try to get it right in the symmetry. Click on this, make your sphere. Then of course, Press W to move it, and you can move your sphere. And then E to scale up or down. Now you'll notice that we get almost like a joint or some sort of manipulator when I start hovering around it. This is known as a child and parent relationship. So let me grab the rotate tool. So the rotate tool is basically gonna say that whatever happens to this one, I have to grab the, the the actual joint, I can rotate this. So you can see that with this, I can move it left to right. So let's go back to the main one, which is now hidden. <laughs> if I click on this one, you can see that I can rotate it. So it gives me an option to move or even place my object in a way so that I can move my Z-spheres and it's not set in stone. If I wanna add a Z-sphere, I can go back into my drawing and just click right in the middle between the two spheres, and now I have another C-sphere. So then I can grab the scale one if I want to, and I can make it maybe bigger or smaller, depending on what you're trying to achieve. And of course, I can grab W and move it. So if I want to maybe move it up here and then scale it, maybe I'll go back to move and just kind of grab these and just push these back this way. I don't push these back. And then you just kind of build from there. So you're gonna add another sphere, press W to move it. And click on this one to scale it. Whoops, that was rotate. And again, you just move it. You can try moving it left to right, but it doesn't do anything. It actually manipulates based on up and down. So I can make this a little bit bigger. I'm gonna grab my draw 
tool and just click right in the center here, make it nice and large. W, move it. I'm gonna make this bigger. Gonna click on this one again, scale, make it bigger, and so on and so forth. So you're so basically what you're trying to create is some sort of uh, design of your creature. Now you may be asking, like, well, what's the point of all this? Well, let me show you what's gonna happen afterwards. What we're going to do is um, when you scroll down into your tools, there's something called a pre adaptive skin. And if you open that up, it turns into a preview and it basically gives you geometry. So the idea behind this Z sphere is that you're going to create as many Z spheres as you can or shape it so that you can start developing a primitive mesh. This is very low mesh. It doesn't have much information, but it's going to get me started on the creature design. So if I feel like this needs more, for example, I feel like uh, this needs to be a little bit bigger. And I'm going to focus in here. And I'm going to create, grab my draw tool and just kind of create a couple of fingers. Press W and I'm going to grab my move tool. And again, it's all about what's going on with your creature's hands, right? So it's all about the direction that they're facing. So I'm gonna make one a little bit longer here. And I'm gonna make this one, this one a little bigger. And this one a little bigger too. And then if I want to, I can go in here and add even more details by adding another sphere. Oops added one there, I didn't want that right here. So then I can grab this scale and make it smaller if I want to. You can also move it up a little bit so it's a little bit more And if you just want to see what that looks like, you can go ahead and preview it and you can see that again it's giving me this nice instead of having this sharp claw, it's now starting to look more like a um, fingers. So again, I can go in here, click on draw, grab scale, and then I can move it up. And this one, I think I'm just going to push backwards. So again, you can click preview and you can see what type of results you're, you're getting. So I can add another one here to try to get uh, more of a shoulder. And of course I need to move it because when you see that transparency thing, it's, you know, it's okay, but just kind of, just realize that it's kind of like a preview problem, but that can kind of start helping building muscles and muscular system. So for example, I can add, add another one here. Oh, you gotta be in draw. And then I can scale it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but at least it gives you an idea of shape and things like that. So for example, I'm not a fan of the wrist right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another one for the wrist. And then I'm gonna scale the wrist down. So that's gonna give me a little bit more shape. Again, I like to look at the preview just to see how it's going. Because the more I can push the shape here, the better I'm gonna be off. So whenever you guys are creating creatures, um, again, you're just blocking out the silhouette at this point. You're just trying to make it look like a creature as much as you can. Uh, you're not really gonna have eyes and things like that and all, and the mouth is gonna be in a separate, you can have a jaw and things, but it, the shapes, it's gonna be just a basic shape. So the this object is affected by my draw size. So you'll notice that my draw size is 64. However, if I bring this all the way really big, to like a thousand, it will impact all of them, right? So notice that it's actually impacting everything that I select. So keep that in mind. So a lot of people, when they're working on this, they actually choose a very small draw size so they know what they're selecting without accidentally selecting another piece. So keep your draw size pretty small because you don't want to accidentally grab things that you weren't supposed to. Uh, let me grab move and then gonna grab the rotate just to move it up a little bit and then I'm gonna move it out. Add another one here and then scale it. Cool. 
All right. So what if I wanted to create like a tail? And I mean, I can keep drawing and drawing and drawing. So another thing I wanted to show you guys, it's actually kind of fun, is that it will follow your it will follow your mouse. So what I mean by that is that if I click here and I click and drag, if I hold down control, you're going to notice that I can actually move this. I can't move it up or down, but it moves it left to right. Right. So instead of just clicking and dragging, you usually just get one. And you're kind of stuck with it. But if you hold down control, you can actually push it further. But what's cool about this is that if you click on this, click control, and then let go of control, then click again and let go, you can actually get, uh, it will actually follow your mouse, right? Which is pretty neat in my opinion. So now I've got this really crazy looking tail. So let me demonstrate that again, because it's a little weird. So what you want to do is, I'm trying to make sure I'm on the side as much of a side as possible. There it is. You're gonna click control, drag it out a little bit, let go of control, then click control again and let go, and then it will follow your mouse. There you go. And then I can go in and start scaling. There's a lot of little ones in here. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. But it's actually pretty fun if you wanted to quickly make um, that. So you can preview it and see what that looks like. And then that would be a way to kind of start your creature. So obviously there's, I can definitely do more with the body and of course the head. But uh, let me go back into scale. Scale the body a little bit more here. All right, so if I wanted to make wings, I would do that later. I run, If I wanted to just do regular wings, I would just kind of keep it as is. And um, I think they're too small, so I'm just going to oh, um, move them. And let me focus on the head here. Oops. So uh, have some fun with the Z-Spheres. It takes a little bit of practice, but once you get it, it's actually pretty fun. So I feel like my neck needs more love here. It's a really great tool. It's a great way to start your creature designing. Maybe I want antenna. Let me make my draw size a little bigger here. There we go. Bring that out a little bit. Is there another one? Can I skip? Preview it. Oh, I did something really crazy. So I must have done added a sphere that I wasn't supposed to because, wow. So that's why you should be careful when you have, there it is. Um, it's going to pay attention to all that stuff because um it can get busy really fast wow <laughs> so somewhere along there so again if you need to delete anything just hit alt and then click on it go to draw and then 
there you go. So that will get rid of that one. So maybe now I can move this one forward. Now, notice that if I grab the sphere itself, it moves. But if I grab the joint, it will move the rest of it too. But rotate might actually be a better uh, option for this one. So let me click on, here we go. a little better. Let's see if that, there you go. Does that look weirder? <laughs> just ruining it at this point. All right, let me just undo that. And there you go. That's how you use uh, these spheres to start designing a basic shape or a silhouette of your creature. Using these spheres, you can create a base mesh and then it is ready for detailing, which is what I'm going to be showing you guys next. So in the next video tutorial, let's take these spheres and convert it into a base mesh and start adding details. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos. If you learned a thing or two, please like and subscribe. That is your message to me, letting me know that you like this type of content and that you want to see more. Don't forget to comment. I always like to read your comments as well. Uh, please take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. That is where you can download free 3D models, eBooks, and so much more. And while you're there, take a look at my courses. I have a bunch of courses for you where we go into a deep dive into Maya, Photoshop, and so much more. So if you would like to support me a little bit more, please consider purchasing an e-course. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Keep creating and I will see you next time.